My message for Open Education Week is that the Commonwealth of Learning is committed to open educational resources. We are in fact the first international intergovernmental agency to have a corporate policy that declares OER to be Cole's normal way of doing business. Cole's mission is to help the countries of the Commonwealth use a variety of technologies to expand and improve learning at all levels. And the needs are immense. The number of people in higher education may increase by 80 million by 2025. That would require three large new universities to open every week for the next 13 years. And that is not happening. Other methods must be used. The situation at secondary level is even worse, with hundreds of millions of youngsters between the ages of 12 and 17 not getting schooling. Open schools based on distance education must be part of the answer. Rural development is another huge challenge involving even larger numbers. And Col is having considerable success at improving prosperity with a mass approach using mobile phones. But all these examples of technology-mediated learning require good learning materials. And that is why Col is so committed to the principle of OER. Internationally, OER are making good progress. We are past the stage when people produced OER but never thought of using OER produced by others. We are now seeing OER from the south being used in the north, which is most encouraging. But we still cannot say that OER have truly entered the mainstream of education. For that to happen, we need more governmental support for OER. UNESCO and COL have taken up that challenge in a project called Fostering Governmental Support for OER Internationally, which is partially supported by the Hewlett Foundation. It is also supported by two recent documents, a basic guide to OER and guidelines for OER in higher education, and you can download both these from our website. Our project has three interlinked activities. First, we are conducting a survey of all the world's governments to find out whether they already have or intend to develop policies on OER. Second, to complement the questionnaire surveys, we are holding regional policy forums in each UNESCO region. Government officials will come together to review OER activity in the region and to discuss policy approaches. We held a first forum for the Caribbean in January and there will be similar events in Africa in February, Latin America in March, Europe and the Asia Pacific in April and the Arab region in May. The third activity and one aspect of the forums will be the drafting of a declaration on OER for presentation to a World OER Congress that UNESCO is convening in Paris in June. And we hope that through the declaration governments will commit to promoting OER and the open licensing of educational materials generally. OER have great potential for reducing the cost of expanding quality education. So we hope that when they assemble in Paris in June, governments will adopt a declaration urging that educational materials produced with public funds be made available under open licenses. Government backing for open licensing is essential if we are to make OER the normal way of doing business instead of a donor-dependent phenomenon. And we believe and hope 
that this joint UNESCO coal project will help to bring open educational resources into the mainstream of education and we invite all governments to support it.